Welcome to the Transformative Principal Podcast, where we learn how to be an amazing educational leader. I am your host, Jethro Jones. Are you ready to be a transformative principal? I'm looking for about 10 people who are ready to do what it takes to lead with integrity, find balance, and take your school to the next level. If you're looking to improve your leadership in a measurable way, go to transformativeprincipal.org slash mastermind to see if you qualify to join a group of like-minded people who are ready to be the best principals in the country. Welcome to Transformative Principal episode 198. Can you believe it? Almost 200. This is Jethro Jones, your host. Thank you so much for listening. I love doing this podcast and it is amazing. So today we are going to talk with Dr. Drew Williams, who is the principal of Tuacon High School, which is a charter school in Southern Utah that shares its campus with the Tuacon Center for the Arts. And you're going to love how we talk about his uh, core values, how to have deeper learning and all the great things that he is doing at that Performing Arts High School. So thank you so much for listening. Please take a moment and help me celebrate getting to almost 200 by sharing this on social media with some of your other leader friends. I would greatly appreciate it. Welcome to Transformative Principle. I am excited to have Dr. Drew Williams on the show with me. Uh, so thank you, Drew, for being with me and uh, give us a little bit of an introduction about yourself and who you are. Wow. Thank, yeah. Thank you for having me. So I, I'll say this, I got into educational leadership uh, kind of uh, by happenstance and, and, um, and love it. I, I was a teacher, started my teaching career in Las Vegas uh, and then moved to the Wasatch Front in Utah and, uh, and taught a variety of classes, business, woodshop, videography, um, to name a few. And my wife and I were both musicians. And so we thought, okay, it's time to, it's time to move to Nashville and, uh, and, do, the <laughs> and do the music thing. And so we kind of packed it up and said that that was kind of it. My wife's a teacher as well. And we said, we're, we're just going to kind of put that on the shelf and, and go to Nashville and play music. And so, so when we got out there, Lacey, who, who probably is the brains of the bunch said, uh, yeah, well, we still need jobs um, in order to support kind of our music habit. So we, we both uh, got a job at uh, Glencliff High School, which is in downtown Nashville. And I had enrolled at Belmont to get my master's of business in music business administration. So was excited to, you know, totally shift gears and change. And there was a principal at Glencliff. His name was Tony Majors. And, and for the, really for that first time, I saw this amazing leader who was absolutely changing the culture of a school, changing the instructional, uh, what was happening instructionally and, and ultimately changing the lives and the trajectory of all these students who otherwise would have, uh, would have not graduated high school and then the work that that took. And so I dropped out of Belmont and jumped into a, a program for my administrative degree and, uh, and haven't looked back since I, we, we played music in Nashville. We lived out there for 10 years and, and loved every second of it. But through that 10 years, got my master's in ed leadership and then uh, worked on my doctorate and got that uh, in strategic and organizational theory with the emphasis in education. So cool. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and here we are at Tuacon and in, in beautiful Southern Utah. So, well, that's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about about your school briefly. And I just want to note that I think you're my first guest who has, who's an actual uh, musician. Apologies to any of my previous guests if you do have songs in the iTunes store, but that's pretty cool that uh, that you do. I was listening to one just before we, we get connected on the call. So it's good stuff. Definitely suggest you check that out. So talk a little bit about your school and, and some of the things that makes it unique. So this is a, it's a, uh, it's a charter school. In fact, it was the very first high school charter in the state of Utah. So it's been around for, for almost 20 years and its focus is a performing arts high school. And, and what makes Tuacon really unique is that it is attached on the same campus as Tuacon Center for the Arts, which for those regionally know is, uh, is a fantastic 
Broadway in the desert venue, outdoor amphitheater venue that seats about 2,100 uh, patrons. Um, they run three Broadway musicals, uh, you know, for about six months a year and bring in casts from, from all over the world. Uh, this year we've got folks from Australia and England and Broadway. And so it's a really unique space in that we have these working professionals on the same campus as students who are here and made the choice to be here to, to pursue performing and visual arts. Cool. I, I think that's really exciting. And that has to do some different things to the way you guys do school. Having, you know, a whole school drama club almost is, is what it seems like. And, you know, from my, my time in high school doing drama, it was, it was always a different approach that forced us to, to do rather than uh, be passive and observe. And so talk a little bit about how that affects your, the way you do school. So this is my second year here at Tuacon, and we're, uh, we're really working to partner even more with the amphitheater, with the, with the Center for the Arts, as we think about how we teach. So I'll give you an example. This year, uh, we had a, a pretty amazing, we call them Titan Times, but a pretty amazing talkback assembly. So we have 400 students, roughly, and we had uh, about 10 of the production, the behind-the-scenes staff, talk about their journeys to get to um, professional theater. And they talked for about an hour. And then the actors and actresses came in and talked about their journey as they moved into and, and got roles uh, traveling with uh, Broadway or regional theaters and eventually making it to Tuacon. So through that experience, and, and one of the neatest things that I've seen as a principal is as the actors and actresses walked off stage to a, a pretty rousing applause from our students, you know, the, the thing that they all said was just the energy level at this school is, is off the charts. And, and all of them said, how can we give back? How can we, how can we connect in classes and teach master classes? What do you need? You know, do you need classes for seniors on how to audition in LA, in New York, in Nashville? Do you need classes, dance classes? So, so just this partnership and the willingness of, of these professionals to give back to students, I think is, is really what makes the education environment here so unique. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, it's one of those things where uh, acting and music, you know, it seems like there are so many people who want to do that and aren't successful. And you actually have access to people who are successful and do have, you know, you know, they've made it all the way to, to Tuacon, as you said, and I think that that's, that's a pretty neat perspective. So they can talk about the real aspect of what it's like to struggle through and figure out how to do the job and go through that hard time where you're hustling and, you know, working two different jobs to support your habit, like you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. And then they're, they're at a point where, where that's their, their job. I think that that's a pretty unique opportunity for you guys and very cool. Yes. And, and that it's a daily thing. It's, you know, it's right. not, I've, you know, I've worked at a lot of amazing schools that, that bring in industry professionals and that's, that's incredible, but we don't have to bring them here. They're already here. And I think that's what makes this place unique. Yeah, that is, that is very cool. So, you know, when we, when we talked about what we would talk about on the, on the podcast today, we're talking about compliance learning versus uh, deeper learning. And so let's, let's talk about how that relates to this approach of, of how you get kids engaged in, in what they're learning. Yeah. You know, you've got, uh, I think it's important to kind of define, define this compliance piece a little bit. And I, for me, it's, you know, you've got a school system, particularly public education, that's really designed after the industrial revolution. You know, you've got the bells and they ring and, you know, the bell chimes at the end of the day. And that means everybody gets to go home and the bell chimes when you're supposed to eat lunch and it chimes when you're supposed to get back in class. And, you know, how many of us could say that we remember, you know, please open your book to page 235 and start working on the problems. Um, I mean, that, that's just so synonymous with what so many of us experienced in education. And, and I think we can all share stories of those transformative teachers that, that kind of 
turn that idea upside down and, and really engage students. And so for me, it's this idea of moving past, you know, the, the culture of our building is not, it's not about compliance and on task. It's not about, did you do homework? Did you not do homework? It's all about this idea of being urgent and joyful and passionate and, and really thinking and discussing deeper level questions that are not just made up in an education environment, but are actually true, real, relevant questions that students are grappling with uh, and trying to find answers with that, that will impact their life. Yeah, that impacting their life is so true. And whether we realize it or not, the way we do education is impacting their life. And so we want to impact it positively and not negatively. And it's, it's just so important for us to realize that right now, when they're in high school and middle school and elementary and know that we can make a change. Now, Mm -hmm. one of the real challenges is that this is how everybody has done school for decades. And so parents have grown up in this compliance-based system. Teachers have grown up and been very successful in the compliance-based system. And so, you know, what do you have to do to, to get that shift to go to more engagement and deeper learning that is more real? Well, I think that's the golden ticket. Um, yeah, that's why I asked it, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. I don't, yeah, I don't have that golden ticket, unfortunately. I think for me, it's it's this idea, and again, very lucky to be on a campus that that just has this idea of working professionals. You know, as for instance, when we do auditions, we can bring these working professionals in to work with our staff and work with our students. And one of the things that we've talked a lot about on our staff is as many of our staff are not only teaching professionally, but also working outside of their, their teaching uh, jobs and, and pursuing, you know, careers in directing and acting and music and art. Uh, our art teacher, you know, spends the summer doing art shows all across America. And that gets a lot of buy-in, but it also keeps our teachers sharp um, with what is currently happening in their industry. And, and so when they're talking and answering questions and engaging and facilitating conversations, then there's, there's more buy-in from students because it's relevant. But I think as we're making the shift uh, at Tuacon from compliance base to, to this, this idea of kind of evaluation synthesis or joyful, passionate, it's, it's really rethinking the way that we're teaching. And we're, Right now, we're, we're following uh, Trevor McKenzie um, as a model. We're following his dive into inquiry. And so we're not using content necessarily as a vehicle to teach students. We're, we're using our core values at the school, um, which are collaborative design, candid feedback, and original work. And we're using those to teach students through different contents. And so the teachers are focusing on those three components. And if it's a math teacher, then they're focusing on it through a math lens, through a science lens, through a, a dan- dance lens, but also encouraging for the, for the first time in a systematic way where math exists in art and dance and science. And so really kind of trying to dissolve this educational method where we just work from a book and work from page one to page 500 in a book and try to get through that. And, and have teachers connect and, and say, what are you doing in your class? Let's, let's actually do projects together that are relevant to our community and to our school so that they're learning art and science and math at the same time in the way that they would do that in the real world outside of high school. Yeah, I, I love that approach. And I think that is so, so important because we, <laughs> we just don't learn things in isolation right. anywhere but in school. and. You know, I was I was reading something just the other day in some like some textbook or something. No, it was in the state standards for science. And it said that students learn best in context. So make the things that you're doing, you know, contextual and like make sure they have meaning. So don't study the effects of the sun in Fairbanks, Alaska in the wintertime study that, you know, more in the summer when it doesn't go down. And that kind of a approach like made total sense. And yet 
the standards are laid out like there's no research standards in science and but there are in English and social studies and so it's like we separate these things out when they're really interrelated with other things and so there's just so much room for that kind of growth and that kind of collaboration that it's just a shame that we don't do more of this math exists in art and dance and everything else you know we really need to yeah and I and I think to kind of further that approach it one of the one of the ideas that that is tough and and you know and and I, again I wish that I could give you a model or or a methodology of of how to just really implement it well because we're in the process of doing it and it's and it's messy I love Brene Brown she says the middle is messy but it's where the magic happens and that's kind of our mantra this year as educators is we're going to live in the in the messy middle but but we truly believe that we're going to make magic because of that because we're you know, it's not, everything is not defined. We don't have a worksheet for this. We don't have a worksheet for that. There's not a test at the end of the unit that we're, that we're living in kind of this interesting middle that's a gray area. But, you know, the energy that, that's on our campus this year is, is pretty amazing. And, and part of that energy comes from, um, you know, typically the first day of school or the second day of school, you're getting a, a disclosure document or a syllabus and, and they're going over all the rules in the class. And, and I challenged my staff to not do that at all, to not give that out, to not even talk about that, but to ask students, what is it that, that you're curious about, kind of within the context of their, of their content, but what are you curious about in life? And what are you curious about right now? And what questions do you want answered? And and in talking with the teachers after those first couple of days, they said, I know more about my students this year than I ever have. And I know now where to kind of start driving instruction that, I mean, they're excited to come to school. They're running to classes because the teacher is using the curiosity of the students to drive the instruction. It's amazing the buy-in that you get. And that's such a human, you know, I mean, that's just a human nature. If you're curious and interested about a subject, you're going to spend your time diving into it and reading and studying and learning all that you can. Yeah, you and I certainly know that. And I think kids uh, inherently understand that. And yet they come to school and it's just, you know, do what you're told and go where where you're told and things like that. So Mm -hmm. I think uh, what I like about that approach is that it really gets gets to the heart of of why kids are learning instead of why kids are in school. Right. So what are you curious about? And let's talk about those things. That's, that's a fascinating thing. What was the reaction uh, from your teachers when you first requested they not share rules and syllabi? It was, well, no, that's what we always do. Yeah. When are we going to wait? That's what we always do. We need, you know, they need to, the, the, the idea that I learned in, in my education classes is, is be really mean until December. And then you can start, you know, letting off a little bit. And I think there's, uh, you know, I was talking to several teachers at the, you know, before the year started and there was just, there was a lot of excitement mixed with some trepidation excitement in that there was belief. There was kind of this efficacy that yes, education does need to change and it does need to be more inquiry based and connected to, you know, impacting the world or, and the community. But then on the flip side, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the, you've got uh, someone in your ear saying, but there's not a book for this. And, and how are you going to follow the book? Are we going to be able to pass state standards? And are we going to or, or pass state tests? And what about all the tests? And we've got to teach straight to the test. And, and I think we've just taken the joy out of, out of learning, not only for students, but for the adults in the building. And, you know, and everybody's walking around with all of this anxiety. And so when, when we kind of went through that first week and we're on our second week of school now, I think that the vast majority of our teachers said, oh, wow, I mean, this, like kids are excited to be here. And that excitement from students, of course, builds energy and and drives the excitement of teachers as well. And yeah, I mean, there's, I've never seen a group of teachers so excited to be working with students and learning with students. That was a great interview with him. And we're going to get more into 
how he came up with his core values next week. So uh, make sure you pay attention to that. What I loved uh, about today was the idea of not giving kids the rules and just asking kids what they are curious about. Uh, So that is super powerful and very exciting. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you so much for listening to Transformative Principle and have a wonderful day. Transformative Principle is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators by educators. Visit edupodcastnetwork.com for more great podcasts.